everybody was admiring for his shofar. You know, we heard an interesting thing about the shofar on the, on the program. Marsha and I were witnessing, witness, just watching. And uh, they announced that, you know, what what is it all about? And this is just one thing you're going to share more when you get up here. But he said, when the enemy was attacking, they blew the shofar. And the enemy got scared and they flew. They tried to escape. And that was because what they were hearing was the cavalry coming. The enemy was going to through that so far. They heard the cavalry. And they got scared and they left. And that's the way my run is defeating the enemy around here of the devil by going into all these malls and these churches and these full gospel chapters and blowing that so far. People can't stand under that sound. Not Christian people. They have they will enjoy it so much they will want more of it. So that that's come on, give me a Now Martin has suggested that we get Lord to him too. Come on. I'm looking at somebody that's he's this super in evangelism. He, oh, yeah. He's a strong believer. He's got it. He's not smiling right now, but he's got that's a smile. That's what I've got his But anyway, Mike, you can come on up and. Uh, uh, Take on that tonight. You won't need the mic. Marsha might not get on this. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your grace and your mercy, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. Real close to doing everything, you know. 
but it was given to them, donated to them. Their company in Texas had donated some uh, uh, stuff there. It, was, it didn't happen all of a sudden. It was, uh, it was kind of hard to pull that tooth, like, you know, because the uh, this virus things that I don't talk about so much had started going, and so they start dragging their foot. And so, but it came through. And so, Friday evening, we got done. I started on it on Sunday. I started the first day of the week, six days, we got it done. Then on the seventh, we rested. I slept. I, I had no, 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 no uh, choice. When I started to go to church that night, but your point started. That's because the battery was dead. But I thank God for his grace and his mercy. I thank God for the people. There's a guy here and his brother. They come out. They work like 10 people. They was hard work. I never see folk work that hard. They just make me sweat. But that was a blessing right there. Amen. That I had to do everything myself. That was a blessing. You know, that's something else for people saying in Christmas, is that I can't down them, but when people come out, there's something different about that. You know what I'm saying? It's something different about when they come out and they help you. They ain't got to, but when they come out and help you, you're grateful. You're grateful. If you had a million dollars, you want to give it to everybody. The ones that helped you. But I just thank him for his grace and his mercy. Shema Israel. I didn't know. 
I didn't know. This is what I seen. And so I can remember the pastor. He said, well, uh, you folk out there smoking cigars, you know, this is the church. And it don't look right y'all doing that after, you know. But then afterwards, the Holy Spirit convicted me to go back in and apologize. And my brother was saying, it's all right, you know. I didn't know. I had never been saved before. So I started off like that to the point where God don't want you to judge nobody. He don't. Keep your mouth closed and just tell them about Jesus. Because if you tell them about Jesus, if you tell them about Jesus, Jesus will come over here. And save you know, just like you saved me.
been to the point where you hate that now. I've seen those, those, those magazines they used to put a white paper in front of I've seen them on there. I take them, rip them up, and put them in a the trash can. One time I had, you know, because I get rid of trash for folk, you know. And then the reason you rip them up, because the neighbor want to see that. So you rip it up or burn it up, you know. But uh, these are the things I do. This is the testimony. These are the things that I do. And, but you got to stay up on this thing. It ain't you. It's the Holy Spirit. Uh, I, I, I don't talk about how many people I brought to the Lord. Because that ain't what I do. The Holy Spirit does that. The Holy Spirit convicted me, knocked me on the ground, knocked me on the ground, and I was back. I'm, I'm living now this way because I was laughing at it. I was laughing at it. I didn't know. We all, me and my brothers, we laughed. We laughed. We said, we laughed. Had a big ball out of the seats in there. But you know, the Holy Spirit is real. The Holy Spirit is real. I love the Holy Spirit. It ain't you that's doing nothing. The people start laying on the floor. I say, you're all right. It ain't you that's doing it. You go in the room and you pray for somebody, and the person in the bed raised up and everybody else on the floor, well, that ain't you that did the day. But it's, you carry his anointing. You carry it. It's in you. So watch what we speak. And we speak in the day of the words. I had to tell folk, you know, like, when, I, when we were doing the roof, people were speaking negative words. I said, please don't be speaking of negative things here. You know, you have to tell them because, you know, not, you know, some people don't be speaking that, but other folk that got fear in them or almost fell off the roof before, and you talk about that stuff, you, what you talk about what will happen to you. Because uh, my wife, when, when she was alive, she's telling me about her. She said, what happened if I fall out this truck going 70 miles an hour? You know what happened to her? She showed me the scars right here. She, she fell out of the truck going 70 miles an hour because she spoke it. So we need to speak that God will save people, that they will, God will cause them to repent. Yes. And if people out there are burning folks' houses, like, you know, and, and doing things like that, that they will be in the spirit of conviction and God will save them right in the midst of when they try to do other things that's wrong. Then pray for ourselves. We gotta watch that. We, we you too much. We have to watch that. And then, you are not the person that fills people with the Holy Spirit. God can use you. And thank God when He uses you. I ain't gonna throw my hat at you. You know, I both be going, you know, you almost like you are portraying yourself. God corrects folks like that. You know, when, you know, you don't mention people's name, but when you start throwing things, you know, just start trying to promote yourself. You could be just sitting, standing up, all of a sudden, folk fall out of the power of God. I said, what's going on here? You all right? I'll walk by them, and all of a sudden, they're on the floor over here. They say, okay. I mean, you must be spending time in prayer in secret, like the time when you first got saved. That's your first experience of the Holy Spirit. People don't like that when you tell them the truth. The truth should set you free. Amen. I wasn't supposed to preach, but that was his testimony. Well, we'll like, preach. That was his testimony. That's a testimony. <laughs> but you know, it's kind of like this. When it really comes down to be a hopper than a red hot aloka. Love your neighbor as yourself. <laughs> Now, I do the same thing if I, if somebody needs some help doing something like that, I would volunteer my time. I do that a lot to help somebody. I don't tell everybody. I don't want to take credit for all that stuff. I used to watch my dad. He, he'd get up early in the morning and work, you know, do something in the yard. That I know that I, that I knew. See, you knew better. You, we know we know better. So I knew better than to say this. 
mom <clears throat> when dad was home. I wasn't smart, at least I thought I was. <laughs> but you know, I just thank God for his saving grace and his mercy. Because he's the one that saved me. I didn't save myself. He saved me. Because, because you know, like, uh, I got I to say this, son. I was a little boy. Dad was like, like this. Five feet of that. His arm was like that. And he uh, was from Alabama. Well, I remember I was in a rocking chair over here. And uh, the rocking chair was a big old thick rock rocking chair. And I had rode out the rocking chair and was crawling. And uh, then wait till I got out the rocking chair. He said, son, I looked up. I got something I was going to give you. Now, he, he was, uh, let's see, what was that? He, he, he was right here by the kitchen. I looked up. And when he said, I got somebody that's going to get you, I turned around this way. Boom, hit the team in the corner, right, 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 where you sit, sit there. Hit the team in the corner, learn how to walk instantly, so I ran it before I walked. And uh, he, 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 uh, dad, uh, some people thought he was mean, but he wouldn't. He, he would, he would, he would tell you, I'd tear you up. You smell bad when you play it. Get to Alabama with him. I'm glad I wasn't in the, in, the, in, the, in, in the Alabama place back there in Woodshed or something. I'd probably have been an archbishop now or something. <laughs> <laughs> I think you pick your own streets out there. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, my dad, when my, when my dad, he, he said, uh, Remember what I said I was going to give you? He had it behind his, his hand. He said, kill. This is the first book you're going to read. That's the exact words he said. Now, what that say? I'm like this. Uh, 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 I just learned how to walk. I was trying to say it. He just wanted me to try to say it. And he said, hold me by him. I'll repeat it when he said it. So he gave it to me. I had killed it. So I'm going with that by I'm opening it up, looking at the pages and the pictures. And I took it and set it on the counter in the kitchen. They go in there and put it in the room. Go in there and put it in the first hand. See, I thank God for my dad. People don't know the way I was raised. I my dad, he old boy. I, I was eating some chocolates one day. And because uh, I seen somebody else doing it. We almost repeat when we see somebody saying something over and over again. We got to be careful that who we listen to. Anyway, <laughs> here uh, I eat some chocolates and then Dad went in, in the store. No, Dad went in the store. I, I, I wouldn't have never put it. Uh, bad Dad went in the store. I'm eating those chocolates. And the guy was knocking on the window and trying to get my attention. That boy's boy. But I wasn't paying attention to chocolates when I heard it, but I know chocolates was good. I was eating one after another. I was eating the whole bag. So he come out, and he was watching. He knew where mom was. He said, you hear me trying to get your attention? He said, uh, so uh, he said, show me where your mom was at. Make a long story short, Dad said, turn it next to us to 20th chapter. I read it. I got down up until I was wondering why I read that. I read it. Went down to the eight, you know, the, the, the thou shalt not steal. I want to explain that to you. Buy some, get a receipt for it. I read it from every year to the go to your room. Now, I read Revelations when I was in the room. Now, in the sixth grade, I get a phone call. I, I stole my brother $10 because I got let the girl. What did you get? When I went to Ed, I was looking at Disney Man over there when we went to a conference. I'm looking at the Disney, and I said, I didn't enjoy that because that's, that's uh, I, I hear them talking, I know I've been a lot of times when I see it. So, Lord bless you, Lord keep you, make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you, give you shalom. Amen. Lord, when I 
sound off the shofar or whatever you want to do. Because I can't tell you what to do. You do move, you move, Holy Spirit.
tuve 